Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel, our website, or our social media. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing an all-time great, never hotter than it is today, but launched in 2010. This is the Rolex Submariner Date 116610 LV, better known by its pop culture nickname, The Hulk. There's a lot to love, even if you're not into comics, although I'm into both Rolex and comics, so this is a fun day for me. I'm also a fan of the color green, and historically, this was the first ever Submariner to have both green bezel and green dial. Let's talk about the size. 40 millimeters in diameter by 12.5 millimeters thick by 48 millimeters lug to lug. The watch measures 50.8 millimeters end link to end link. So that's the absolute span across the wrist with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Let's throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. This timepiece has charisma. Now, you could probably guess as to where I sourced this particular glove. So these are peas in a pod. And frankly, this wrist belongs with this watch under any cuff, under any sleeve. This is a watch that's low enough to wear as your dress watch. This is a watch that's low enough to wear under formal attire. And since Rolex dive watches are apparently the all the time, all occasion timepieces, there's nothing odd about wearing an aggressive diver with a suit and tie. And this watch is perfectly suited, especially if you have the raffish flair to wear a colored suit. The timepiece would fit on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. And again, at 12.5 millimeters thick, it even sits lower than that on the wrist. An outstanding match for a cuff. The timepiece with a bracelet, three-link oyster design, all of satin finish, so it's a bit more muted than some of the other oyster designs, and the only polish on this bracelet is going to be the outer faces, removable links fixed by screws, gaps on the underside to vent the wrist and avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. Now the watch and the bracelet and the clasp, all 904L steel, which Rolex makes in its own foundry. It is a highly anti-corrosive steel. It's not necessarily harder, but it is more resistant to corrosion. And while most steels have to be wiped after exposure to corrosive elements such as acid or seawater, 904L does not. The clasp is a double lock. As you can see, there's a beak and a hook system internally, and that locks once. You can see the lift lock system latch right there, so I actually need to lift this to open it up. It's not simply a friction fit system. The second lock is the clamshell, and as you can see, again, a relatively utilitarian finish, satin finished externally. There's a nice little kerf built into the clasp that allows you to dig in your nail and pop it open. As this is a flagship Rolex piece, the internals of the clasp are polished, not media blasted. Here's where we step up from standard Rolex Easy Link Glide Lock. 20 millimeters of adjustment in 10 2 millimeter increments. Now, if you want to throw this over a dive suit, pull it all the way out. But if you want to make small adjustments, well, you can do that too. And you see how I'm able to make sizing changes in real time, depending on my activity level or the hot and cold environment in which I might find myself. Of course, the watch features a strong oyster case. Post-2008, the Submariner has had the super case, which means the lugs are a little bit more squared off and the side is more sheer. Rolex case polish is second to none and on par with the optical quality you get from Grand Seiko's Zeratsu finish, so it's truly impressive. It's also imposing. Though a 40 millimeter watch, especially compared to the previous six digit reference, this really does look like a bigger watch, more like a 42 as the eye tells the tale. Crown guard profile and trip lock crown, three symmetrical dots, that's how you know you're looking at a steel trip lock crown. It is a screw down, the watch is 300 meters water resistant. Let's hear the bezel detent. Rolex bezels are delightful. 120 clicks, very precise. Somehow they managed to be crisp and silky at the same time. Very few brands have managed to pair both characteristics. The knurling, as you can see, features a combination of polish and satination, but it is very sharp and easy to grip, even with wet, sweaty, or gloved hands. Line up the bezel pearl, which on a Rolex is sapphire capped with the minute hand, and now you have a zero to 60 count up timer that I actually find easier to read and more intuitive than a chronograph. The timepiece features a ceramic insert that is highly scratch resistant. The green is all ceramic, and then the fill inside the bezel, the little well for the numerals and the indices, that is deposited platinum that will never oxidize or tarnish. Sapphire crystal cyclops eye magnifier, the dial is a green sunburst metallic. When the watch first launched at Basel 2010, Rolex called this green gold. Now I don't know why they don't tout the goldness of it today. Maybe it doesn't meet a purity standard for the use of the term gold. Maybe they wanted to avoid compromising themselves in Islamic markets where that might have 
limited the appeal of the watch, but it is exactly what I imagined green gold would look like. It's lustrous and explosive in the light. The hands and the indices are all gold, 18 karat white to avoid oxidation or tarnish over time. Now the watch features a Rolex manufactured caliber 3135 inside the case, 31 jewels, smooth bi-directional winding, 48 hour power reserve, COSC chronometer, but also a superlative chronometer, which is Rolex speak for a watch that'll run minus two plus two seconds a day or better. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It has both quick set date and hacking seconds. It features a full balance bridge and a free sprung index for shock resistance and it features an overcoil hairspring made by hand, Breguet overcoil profile, of neopium zirconium blue oxidized to avoid corrosion. And that neobium zirconium anti-magnetic hairspring is what Rolex calls parachrome blue, meaning this watch is shock resistant, water resistant, and magnetic resistant. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Rolex Chromolite Blue Loom by Night.